Hey guys, how's it going? This is Jay with another tutorial. And if you've seen my other videos lately, you'll see that I'm in a completely different location. And this is my home office. I am in the process of setting this up so I can do one-off videos. I still intend on using the studio every now and then, but I do want to set up my home office for one-off videos. And the fact is, I know the audio and video quality isn't going to be as good as normal, but I am working on that, so just bear with me. Anyway, for this video, I wanted to walk you guys through fixing a problem in Debian that drives me crazy. And if you're a Firefox user like me, maybe this will drive you crazy too. Debian ships the ESR version of Firefox, and yeah, that's fine for some people, but most of us will probably want normal Firefox. And it's not an option. You can't apt install Firefox to get the standard version. Firefox ESR is all they package. I don't understand why that is. So in this video, I'm actually going to show you how to get the actual Firefox from Mozilla in Debian, not ESR, but standard Firefox. And this will also work in other distributions as well. I put Debian in the title because, you know, that that's probably the... Um, camp that'll want to benefit from this the most, but regardless of what distribution you are using, this should actually work for you. So here on my laptop, I'm using my System76 lemur, and I am recording directly off the HDMI to show you the process straight from my computer. So right now I have Firefox ESR up on my screen. This is the version of Firefox that you get if you install Debian. So what we're going to do is download the actual Firefox tarball, and I'm going to paste the URL in here. And don't worry about it if you can't see it. I'm going to have a link in the description below. There's going to be a link to the wiki article, which will have all the steps in there. But this URL, what's cool about it is that it will give you the latest version of Firefox, regardless of what the current version actually is. And if you are using a different language, you could feel free to select a different one. And this is also going to download the 64-bit version, which I find 64-bit is the way to go nowadays. There's really no reason to hold on to 32-bit anymore. So I'm going to assume that you're running the 32-bit version. But basically, all you need to do is get the Firefox tarball downloaded, whether you get it from my URL or you go to Mozilla's site and you download it from there. It doesn't really matter. So I'll just press Enter here. And you can see it's it's going to download Firefox 68. And as of the time I'm recording this video, that is the latest version. But depending on when you're watching this, you'll probably have a newer version. I mean, they come out with newer versions every other week, it seems. So I'll go ahead and download that. And at this point, we don't really need the browser open anymore. So I'll go ahead and close it. And I'm just left here with the terminal that I had underneath. And what I'm going to do is show you the commands that you will need to install actual Firefox on your Debian system or your Linux distribution, whatever that happens to be. Now, one thing that we want to do is make a quick decision on where we want to actually install this. There's two possibilities. If you run this from your home directory, then you'll benefit from being able to go to help and then about and you'll be able to update your Firefox straight from there. Now, if you're concerned about security though, you might actually want to install it in the opt directory and make sure that it's owned by root. And being owned by root gives you the benefit that if someone does run a script in your browser session, that they're not going to have um, permission to actually write to the Firefox application directory. So if it's, if it's owned by root, then those scripts are not going to be able to make any changes because they're not going to have root permissions. So I'll leave it up to you as far as where you install that. But I'll show you both ways, so uh, don't worry about that. Uh, let's go ahead and dive right in. So back here on my terminal, I'm going to go into my downloads directory. And if I list the storage, you can see that I have the Firefox 68 tarball or whatever version it is right there. So I could just do tar dash xvf and then the browser file name and then press enter it's going to extract that for us a bunch of files are going to show up and if i list the storage again you see that i have a firefox directory so what i'm going to do is remove the firefox 
tarball, because we don't need that anymore, we went ahead and extracted it. We have the Firefox directory, we're set. So I'll press enter, and then I'll clear the screen. And then, like I mentioned, we'll need to just decide where we want to move that Firefox directory, where its final location will be. So what we could do is we could go to our home directory. So I'll just go back there and we can make a directory. We can call it bin and we can move that folder. Again, it's in the downloads directory. And we can move it into our bin directory that we just created. Now, in my case, I'm going to copy it because I'm going to show you both methods. So I'm just going to do a recursive copy here and I'm going to copy that folder into the bin directory that I just created, which won't remove the original. And let's just take a look. We have the bin directory and then we have bin Firefox. So we can actually run Firefox from this directory right now and we could be done. There's a little bit more that we can do to make this a little cleaner, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you that. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that Firefox is not running. Remember, we have Firefox ESR installed. So if that's running, we could have an active session and it could just reuse the same Firefox session. It actually shouldn't do that, but just to be safe, we wanna make sure that it's closed. We don't have that little indicator. You notice here, we have an indicator underneath the icon for files that shows that it's running. We don't have that here. We know Firefox is not running. So I can actually open a file browser window. I could go into the bin directory and then into the Firefox directory. And then you'll see a file simply called Firefox. So I'll double click on it. Let's see what happens. And you'll get this message most likely and it's normal. It's just basically telling you that this installation of Firefox is going to have a new profile. You can make a decision if you want to remove Firefox ESR or if you'd like to have normal Firefox installed alongside it. So this is basically telling you that these two versions of Firefox will not share the same profile. So it's important to keep that in mind. But anyway, I'll press Alt right here and go to Help and then I'll go to About. It says Firefox is up to date. If there was a new version, since this is running as me, basically it's in my home directory, I would actually have an option to have it download a new version of Firefox if one became available, but this is the latest already. But we can see that we are running Firefox 68, which is newer than the ESR. And it doesn't say ESR, this is actual Firefox. So you could actually just stop right here. Mission accomplished, you have Firefox installed, congratulations. So I mentioned there's a few other things that we can do here to uh, make this a little nicer. So I'm gonna give you some additional steps that you can choose to do or not. But first of all, if I do ls-l against the bin directory, we can see that the Firefox directory is owned by me. And again, the good thing about that, like I mentioned, is I can go to help about and I can do an update right then and there and get that straight from Mozilla. But if a script or a malicious script was to run inside my browser session, because my browser is running as me and the owner is also me, then that means that script would be able to alter my browser. So if you're more concerned about security, what you can do is you could do sudo chown dash capital R, we're gonna change ownership and we're gonna change the ownership to the root user and the root group. And the resource we wanna change ownership on is bin slash Firefox. So bin is in our local working directory. And then the Firefox directory is gonna make that owned by root, but it's also going to do that to all of its contents as well. So easy enough. So let's see if it worked. We can see the Firefox directory is owned by root. So I'll go in there and we can see the contents are owned as root as well. So the, like I said, the downside is we can't go to help about to update this, but we can re-download a newer version of Firefox anytime we want and replace it. So we could still update anytime we want to. We just have to add a few manual steps. But another thing that you can also do is you can actually just temporarily I go back here. You could just do sudo chown dash r. We could just simply change it back to our user. We can reopen our browser session. And now that it's owned by me, I can go in there. I can run the updater 
that will work. And then once I'm done, um, I can close the browser just to make sure. And then we just make it owned by root again. So you also have that option. So another thing that we can do, and this is optional, is we can move the Firefox folder to the slash opt directory to make it available to all users. Because right now it's in my home directory, it's available to me. So two things you could do if you have more than one user, you could create a bin directory and a Firefox directory in those user accounts, or you can just put it in a shared location. So I'm gonna show you the shared location method right now. So what I'm gonna do is sudo, because I'm going to be moving this into a location that is owned by root. I'm gonna use the move command here. And in my downloads directory is that Firefox directory. And in my case, I'm actually going to do cp-r because just in case I need to re-record this or I make a mistake, you know, I basically want to be able to go back to that. So whether you copy or move, it doesn't really matter. But basically, we're copying that and we're going to copy it into the slash opt directory. All right, so let's take a look at that. We see we have slash opt and we have Firefox and we have Firefox in there. Notice it's owned by root right now, which if it's in the op directory, that's especially important. So we got read access to everyone. So everyone can read it, but only root can actually alter that. So now this is available to all users on the system. So that's great. So one problem that we have here is that we don't have an application launcher to get to this browser. So if I go to the activities overview, you know, I have Firefox ESR right there. And if I search for Firefox here, I only have that one. So I don't have an easy way to get to it. Yes, I can go to the file manager and open it, that's fine. But if you're like me, you probably prefer to have an application launcher. So how do we get that? Well, you know what, I have just the thing. I will show you how to create an actual application launcher right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and open a text editor. I'll just do a new window because I already have a file open. And I have this file saved on my hard drive already, so I'm going to open it up and I'll show it to you. And it's this file right here, I already have it saved. I called it Firefox-Custom.Desktop. Let's open that up and see what's inside. Now, I know that the text is kind of small here, so you're probably not going to see it, and I do not recommend manually trying to type all this out because you know the margin of human error is kind of high here. So what you can do is go to the show notes below this video and click on the link to the wiki article where I will have this available for you to uh, download so that you'll have it. And there's something that we want to pay special attention to, and that is the path. It's going to be here more than once. We do need to retain the percent %u, that's actually important, otherwise links won't open properly. But we have this path right here. Now if we do have Firefox in slash opt Firefox, if that's where it is, then it's fine. This is good. This is already correct. We have it here. We have it a second time right here. And we have it a third time right here. So if you have this in, you know, for example, your home directory, in bin Firefox, for example, then you're going to want to make sure that these three instances of the path to Firefox are correct. And again, you just simply copy this from the article. And I have it saved in my home directory, so you can simply just go here to the menu, you could do save as, and you just save it in your home directory, that's totally fine. I already have it saved here, so basically you just wanna make sure the paths are correct and save it. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this. And here you'll see that we have Firefox-Custom.Desktop. So, okay, great. We have a shortcut icon, but we still are not, we're not going to be able to see it in our application launcher. So what do we do? There's two ways of doing this. If you have it in the slash opt directory, so for example, if you intend for this to be available for multiple users, then here's where you're going to want to move that to. And again, in my case, I'm going to copy it, but you can move it or copy it, that's fine. And we're gonna copy or move this file to this location. And again, this is if you have it in the slash op directory. We're gonna move it to user, share, applications. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Actually, we need root privileges in order to do that. So if I do ls-l user share applications, I'm gonna grab for Firefox, let's see what we have. 
we have two. We have the Firefox ESR, and then we have the Firefox Custom that we just added. So if you are intending to run Firefox from your home directory, well, we want to probably put this in a different place. So what we're going to do is copy or move the Firefox custom.desktop. And where we want to move this to is going to be your home directory. I'm currently in my home directory. So relative to this directory, I just do dot local share applications. So now we have it there. So I'll just simply do it ls on that just to make sure it shows up properly. We have the Firefox custom desktop right here. So we can see that we actually do have that saved. So now we should actually see it in our menu. So I'll go ahead and open that up. And you know, never mind the icon, I believe that should correct itself. Uh, I, I'm too lazy to log out and log in right now, but we have an application launcher. We see it right here. So I can click on that. And you can see it opened up Firefox. And if I check the version, we are on version 68. So we know that this is the proper version and we were able to get to this by simply adding an application launcher, which I just showed you how to do. Finally, and optionally, you can, if you'd like, remove Firefox ESR if you have no intention of ever using it. In which case you just do sudo apt remove Firefox ESR, and I'll press enter. And it wants to remove this package. Now what you might see on your end is that it might try to install another browser. It's just the way that the packaging works. There's really no way around it. In my case, it went ahead and installed the Chromium browser when I removed this because there's a requirement that a web browser be installed. And since we installed Firefox from a tarball, it's not recognized by the apt command. So it doesn't recognize that there's actually a browser installed because we did that outside of the package manager, but this is optional. You don't have to do this. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out. But for the purposes of this tutorial, we do have Firefox installed and it is the standard version. And again, this is great for Debian users because you have no other option as far as apt is concerned. However, if you are running any other distribution, this is also of benefit because you don't have to wait until your package maintainer updates it. You could simply just go ahead and download it yourself straight from Mozilla. And as soon as they have it available, you can download it immediately. So there you go, guys. I hope that was helpful for you. And, you know, I personally like to be in control of my browser install. So this works pretty well for me. So hopefully it works pretty well for you, too. So go ahead and leave me some comments in the you know show notes below. And I will have more tutorials coming for you very soon. So stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. If you want to help me out, make sure you check out the description below this video where you'll find links to my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, second edition, as well as my Patreon page. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button and share it on Twitter or any other social media network. And be sure to subscribe so you'll be the first to see my latest videos as they're uploaded. Thanks again.